Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another board game review for you all. Today I'll be reviewing this game right here, Palazzo, designed by Reiner Knizia and published by Rio Grande Games. I'm going to set this game up, show you a little bit as to how it plays, and then we're going to get back to hear my final thoughts and grades. So this is what the game looks like set up. We have this material supply area board in the center and it is surrounded by four different markets. We also place this master builder little piece right here uh, randomly on any one of the four markets. This guy will be traveling clockwise as the game progresses and I'll show you how that works. We shuffle three separate stacks of tiles with one, two, and three on their backsides, corresponding with the three different rounds or levels of this game. Here we have the currency or money cards. We shuffle it up and we deal each player a hand, a starting hand of four cards. And this is what you see. You have three different color-coded um, currency cards. You have this reddish color here, this grayish color, and there's another color out there. <laughs> Don't have it on the starting hand. And we also have these wilds. The wilds are always worth two. The special colored currencies range anywhere from three to seven. All right, so we are going to show how this game plays. We also have these player aids that show players and remind players how scoring it works at the end of the game. So on the player's turn, they have one of three options that they could do. The thing that they will be doing most often, most typically, is they'll be buying tiles. If you choose to do the buying tile action, what you do is you draw the top tile from the current round you are on, and you place the first one, the top, top tile, right here in the material supply. This is an area that's available for purchase by the active player. Then you will draw the second tile as well. You're going to count the number of windows and or um windows and or uh doors doors count as windows for the purposes of scoring this right here is not a window it just indicates that this is a level one tile the tiles represent different levels of buildings that you're constructing and they range from one all the way up to five uh okay so here you got one door there are no windows on this so what you do is to determine which market you place it on, you start from the master builder and you count the number of doors and or windows and that's how many spaces clockwise from the master builder you will place this. So in this case, there's only one. Here's the master builder. We'll place it in the next market clockwise. So now, because this, the first player decided to go with uh, building or buying tiles, now they are committed to either put this up for auction or to buy this straight up. They don't have any other option. You cannot back out once you've made this decision to buy. So what I'm going to do as the active player is if I wanted to buy this right here, the price of these tiles is always 10 minus the amount of tiles that are actually here. So there's only one tile here. So this is actually a cost of nine. The more tiles build up here, the cheaper the individual tiles will be. You can never buy more than two tiles from the main or material supply section right here. So I can just buy this for nine or I could try to put this up for auction. And right now they're both level ones. They both only have one door and or window, so they're of equal value. So I'm gonna try to put this up for auction because the way auction and bidding works in this game is the active player grabs this Certificato card, which, as you can see, is worth three money. And they get to play this. This is a card that's not part of their hand. They get to play this as their initial bid. So the active player always has a three money advantage in their auctions. So now the other player is going to look and they're going to see if they want to compete for this as well. So they're going to raise the bid by placing this four. And when you, whenever you deal with buying or building, um, buying or bidding, whenever you play money, you have to play color cards of the same currency, the same color. You can't play money, you can't mix a gray with a red or something like that. You can mix the wild cards, right? And there is one exception to the rule of playing cards of one type, 
And that's if you ever have three of the same number, no matter what color they are, you could pay those, play those three, and no matter what color and what number it is, they count as 15 money for you. But you have to play it as a group, as a set. You can't play it one by one. You have to play all three right there and then as a set of three, and they will count towards your bid or towards your purchase as 15 money. Okay, so this player has bid four. They raised the bid of three. Uh, the dummy player here, or this player, the first player here, wants to increase the bid. So they'll pay their wild two to make this a bid of six. And this player will back out. They just wanted him to pay a little bit of money for that, right? Not get it for free. So you discard the currency money that you use. This certificato is set aside once again. And now the first player has won this. And they start a building right here. This is pretty simple because it's a level one. As the game progresses and you acquire um, buildings of different levels, you'll be faced and confronted with more choices. So this right here is a level one. It has to go onto the bottom. I have no other buildings. And I'm done with my turn over here. So now this player will go with their turn. And they're also going to decide to build. So again, you draw the first tile from the top of the current level right here. And this will go in the center. And then you draw the second tile. You count the number of windows and or doors. In this case, we have a door and two windows, so that is three. Oh, I forgot a big major rule. Every time we trigger an auction, which I just finished triggering an auction, you have to rotate and move the master builder along one space uh, clockwise. So now we're going to count three spaces because of the windows and the doors from the master builder. One, two, and three. And that's where we'll place this tile. So now the... Second player here is actually going to choose to purchase this because it just so happens that we have two tiles that are in sequence one and two and are also of the same material. That's very, very valuable, right? Because when you're building your buildings, you're looking ideally for three things. You're looking for the levels, right? For them to like to, to reach ev all possibly potentially all five levels. But you're also looking to get a good amount of windows because that's going to score you extra points at the end of the game. And you're looking to try to keep, ideally, your buildings to one material. You can combine materials, but at the end of the game, you will be rewarded for keeping your buildings to just one material. So this player is going to buy these cards straight up, these tiles. And the price, you can only buy two, but it just so happens there's only two. The price of a, oh, you know what? He's not going to be able to afford it because he only has 14 money. And the price of each building, each tile, is always 10 minus the amount of tiles that are in the material supply. So there's two. So each of these are worth eight, which would be a total of 16. And I do not have 16. However, I did choose to build. So I'm just going to put this up for auction. And again, because the second player is the active player, they'll start with a certificato card. And the first player here is going to play a four to raise the bid. They want to do something similar where he doesn't get this card for free. And here we go. We'll play a two right there. But we're going to increase it even further. Raise the bid to eight. And again, you have to play cards of the same color. So I would not be able to increase this any further. But the second player does not know that. So the current bid is at eight. Uh, the second player's current bid is at uh, five. Because he hasn't played a colored card yet, he could play a colored card. Committing to gray. And now the current bid is at nine. This player cannot increase that. He will pass and take back his money. The second player will pay that money and acquire this tile right here. Okay. And now we will move on to this player's turn. And now they're looking at things here. And the truth is they don't have much of a chance of doing much. They, don't, they do not have a lot of money. So instead of choosing the build action... They're going to choose the acquire money action. And the way it works to acquire money is you draw two cards plus one card for each other player in the game. In this case, I'm playing a two-player game, so I'm only going to draw one more card. You look at the cards, whatever amount they are, and you choose two of them for yourself. So I might want that six to add on to these. Yes. So I'm going to keep these two sixes 
And that would actually give me three sixes in my hand, which as I said, if I wanted to, I could play these three for a total of 15. And I'm gonna give this one card to the other player. We were playing three or four players. You would give it to the next player clockwise and in clockwise order, each one would choose one of the remaining cards that you did not select. So every time you gain money, theoretically you are helping your opponents out a little bit, but ideally you're helping yourself out more. Okay, so now the second player will proceed. They are also low on cash, so they're also going to take the acquire money action. They're going to look at these three cards. They're all the same color, so it's a pretty easy decision to make. Give the lowest value color to your opponent. All right. And now, let us see what we will do. Okay, so now I am going to, with the first player, I'm going to choose to build again. And again, you draw the first tile, place it right here. That's a pretty good one with three windows. Then you draw the second tile. Oh, wait, I've made a big mistake, guys. I've already done two auctions. So again, every time you trigger an auction, you move the master builder one spot clockwise. That's one of those tricky rules to remember, but you got to keep your eyes on it. All right, so the second tile. All right, so this only has one door. So starting from the master builder, count one space clockwise. And now this player is going to choose to purchase from here. So this is a pretty, in a vacuum, this is a pretty good tile because it has three windows. However, these two are of subsequent levels and they're in the same material. So it's hard to pass this one on. So each of these is worth 10 minus the amount of tiles. There's three tiles here. So each of these is worth seven. You can never purchase more than two from here. So I'm going to buy two at the cost of 14. So right here, that is 14 cash in the same color. And I'm going to grab this one and this two to construct a new building right here. Now, you want to be careful. You don't want to go crazy with the building of the buildings because every building that only has one level is going to actually be worth negative five points to you at the end of the game. So that's something you want to factor. Okay, so now the second player will go. And they have a good amount of money as well, so they're also going to build. We're going to add this one here to the material supply. And we're going to add this second one here. And it has two windows, so starting from the master builder, one and two. And the second player really wants to buy from here. However, these actually cost eight apiece, so if you were to buy two of them, it would be worth 16. And that's something to consider. So instead, he's probably just going to put this one up for auction he'll play he'll pay an opening bid of three and this player here it is going to make him sweat a little bit so he'll play his six because this guy does not want to lose this bid either because that three would be very helpful to player number one because it's the same material as the building he started so he wants to win this bid so he probably wants to you know what? He's not going to go crazy. He wants to save his reds to hopefully buy that in the future. He'll bid a six. See what happens. So I only have a three. So the most I could do is I could tie his bid. So I cannot win this bid. So I must pass. And the second player will win the bid. And they get this three. Now, they could either start a separate building. Or they could choose to put this right here. Because it is a level three. And this is a level two. So as long as the level above it is higher than it in number, it's a legal move. However, this will be worth less points at the end of the game because it's a building of two different materials. So instead, he's going to start his second um, building. Now, if you ever want to add lower levels to these buildings that you've already started, you would need to use a separate action. It's the third possible thing that you could do with your turn. You could either build by either buying or, or bidding, putting up for auction. You could acquire money or you can um, reconstruct, do some reconstruction. And the way that would work is you take an already existing tile somewhere else in your tableau and you could either place it underneath a tile as long as its number is lower or you could play it in between two tiles that are next to each other. For example, you have a three and a five. You could use a turn to slide a four in between them. So that is an additional option for future turns. Because they started two separate buildings of two and three, they might have to work a way to do that because you will score points 
For buildings that are only three levels, that's actually the minimum level requirement in order to score points. Uh, buildings of one level, again, will score you negative five points, and buildings of two level will score you no points. So yeah, buildings of three levels will score you points, but not nearly as much as buildings of four and five levels. So you really are motivated to try to build as high as possible. Okay, so player number one is done with their turn. Now player number two will go, and player number two will choose to get some money right here. So you're going to look at the three cards. This is a pretty easy decision. Give these two to the other player. And the other player here is going to choose to build. They're going to draw the first tile here and place it in the center, the material supply. Um, oh, I forgot again the third auction. I'm sorry, guys. I keep on forgetting to move that master builder. Let me have it in the comments, guys. All right, the second tile here. Two windows. You're going to count two spaces, one and two. There we go. And now the tiles here are a little bit cheaper. So now the second player feels confident because each of these tiles here is worth um, 10 minus 3. So that's 7. You could purchase 2. I'm going to pay 14 right here to purchase these two right here, a level 2 and a level 3. And these are really good. They're the same material. And they have a combined 5 windows already, which are victory points for you at the end of the game. Okay, so... Player number two is done, and player number one will proceed. They're going to build as well. Their first tile here will go in the center, and they'll draw the second tile here, and we will count one space, and we will put it right here. So this player right here is going to look at this tile right here, which is very valuable to them because they already have a level one building. They could put a level two right above it. This is a pretty good tile as well because it has three uh, doors and or windows. They each cost eight a piece right now, which would be 16 if I wanted to get both. I do not have 16 in either currency. So instead, I'm just going to buy one flat out for eight. So I'm going to pay these nine. If you overpay, you do not get change. So I'm going to pay these nine to grab this level two here and add it to the building here. And this is the way we just finished the first level. There's two more levels or two more rounds. This is the way the game keeps on playing as you go. As you can imagine, some of the higher levels have some more valuable tiles in them. The game ends when five random tiles from level three are drawn. So we have this panorama, this panorama of like a Roman soldier. It's five different tiles. And it makes a panoramic image. This is not the two images. I got that reverse right there. Once the fifth of these tiles is drawn in the third round, that is a hard stop to the game. You do not do anything further. So if that stops you dead on your tracks in the middle of your turn, then it's too bad for you. After that, we go to the scoring. And again, the level one buildings are all going to score you five point, negative five points. The level, the two level buildings are going to score you no victory points. Once a building is three levels, it scores you points equal to the amount of windows it has. If a building has four levels, then it scores you the amount of um, the amount of windows you have, plus you get a three-point bonus for it being a four-level building. If it's a four-level building that's all the same material, you get an additional three victory points, right? Then finally, the biggest structure you can have is a level, a five level building. And this will score you, again, the amount of points equal to your windows and or doors, plus a six point bonus. And if those five levels are all the same material, an additional six point bonus. So that's how you play the games, folks. Palazzo, let's get back and hear my final thoughts and grades. So that is how you play Palazzo. So let's get straight to my grades. First of all, we're going to start with components. Uh, Rio Grande back in the mid 2000s weren't really uh, putting the greatest components out there just to be objective. So I'm going to give this a C. I'm going to factor in the time mid 2000s, obviously by today's standards, way antiquated, way behind the curve. But even by its time, I would say it's a C. It's not a B. It's not an A. But I'm not going to give it a D. Let's move on to theme and thematic integration. I'm going to give this a D. And honestly, there's nothing really to it. Um, 
Alhambra, the game that this game is quite often compared to, doesn't really have much going for it thematically speaking either. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna hold it, um, hold it against it. The fact that this game does not necessarily bring you into the theme of building these elegant, beautiful buildings. So yeah, that's a uh, theme. Now let's move on to gameplay. For gameplay, I am gonna give this a solid A. This game plays very, very well. I like what it does. I like what it brings to the table. I like its differences from Alhambra. Again, the game it's often compared to and the game it came before it. Um, and a game that I'm a big fan of. Very successful. Spiel des Jahres, former winner. And with that, I'm just going to move straight into the novelty factor. And I'm going to give this game a B for novelty factor. And the reason why is because, yes, it is building off the shoulders of Alhambra. So I cannot possibly give it an A. I cannot ignore how much it took from Alhambra and how much it copied from Alhambra. The four different markets where, where, where you can acquire um, tiles from. The fact that tiles and their placement and orientation has some value, some factor. The fact that you're choosing uh, color-coded money or currency cards in order to buy these. The fact that you could skip one of your turns in order to reorient or uh, move uh, one of your tiles. Lots of these concepts were clearly borrowed from Alhambra. However, there are some neat introductions and I believe that the things that Rainer Knizia introduced into this game are all improvements on Alhambra. That's just me personally speaking. First of all, the idea that the four different markets, except for the main material supply in the center, that the four markets are up for auction. I find that to be very intriguing, very challenging. Quite often in Alhambra, you're frustrated that somebody gets to a particular tile before you do because it's A, either their turn, or B, they have the right color cards and you never drew those color cards, right? So that could be very, very frustrating. But in this case, you don't have to depend on a particular color card in order to purchase um, a, uh, a, a tile or auction or compete for a tile. You can compete on somebody else's turn and they go to the right location where it's up for auction. And whatever color cards you have, can theoretically be used. I find that to be really, really cool. I also like the fact that the active player has a slight advantage in the auction, right? Because if it weren't for that, it is frustrating. It is your turn. You want to have a little bit of an edge and it incentivizes you to put a tile up for auction because otherwise you might be reluctant, right? Because then you would have a waste of a turn and your opponent would win. You still run that risk that you put up something for auction and you don't know what money your opponent or opponents may have and you still might end up losing the auction, but you know that you have that three card, that three uh, money card that you throw out initially to make the auction, to make the bid, and that gives you an advantage of three, right? So you just have to be within three of whatever your opponents are in order to win that auction. So I think that's cool. I like the idea of the randomized placement uh, the way the tiles are placed based on the master builder piece that rotates and is triggered to keep on moving clockwise with each and every subsequent auction. And the fact that you have to count the windows as the determinant factor as to where, what location, or what market that tile gets placed. So the way the tiles end up building up, right? Sometimes they get distributed very evenly. Sometimes they lump up into one location. It's all randomized. So sometimes you're bidding and you're not just bidding for one or even two tiles. Sometimes you're bidding for three, four, maybe even five tiles at once. And of course, that really ups the value of <clears throat> these bids. So I find that to be a really cool factor. I like the idea of the material supply in the middle and the fact that it kind of follows a supply and demand kind of idea. Because the more tiles that there are on that location, the cheaper they are. The fewer tiles, the more expensive they are, right? So sometimes you might want to press your luck, hold off on buying them, letting the price or letting the tiles depreciate so that you could uh, afford them more easily. But at the same time, there might be a tile or two there that you're very, very interested in. And by allowing that, you might risk that your opponent or opponents end up grabbing those tiles. But again, I just like the idea that you can manipulate that market, understanding the simple concept of supply and demand. I even like the way you draft currency, the way you draft money. In Alhambra, all the money was visible, right? You can never actually draw from the top of the deck, not that I'm aware of. You draw from the visible cards and you could draw one card or multiple cards as long as they total to five or less. Here in this game, you draw the three cards from the top of the deck or potentially more depending on the player count and you get to keep two of those cards, but then you're giving your opponents 
one card a piece. So even that is part of the strategy. Sometimes you might not want to draw money because you know that your opponents are about to draw money and they're going to end up giving you one card anyways and let them waste their turn on it and not you, right? So factoring all these things in, considering these when to go for that money, when's the right time, is a really thought-provoking decision-making opportunity. So I really like the way that was introduced into the game. I also like the fact that this game's it's loosened the restrictions of tile placement right because you don't have those walls to worry about like in alhambra which sometimes can be very frustrating and also the concept that you are just building one tableau of tiles right here you have multiple edifices multiple buildings that you're working on you might be working on four five six seven buildings at a time and they're all each and every single one of them are their own distinct and individual entity in alhambra you're just working with one alhambra and everything has to some way somehow be traced back to the original home tile the starting tile and that could become very very challenging here there is no such restrictions you just start a new building if, if whatever tile you draw doesn't make sense with one of your current buildings you just start a new building you do run the risk of losing five points at the end of the game for any building that does not have at least two levels but at least you have that option you could also just purchase something and get rid of it right so that that's also another option but the idea that you can mix materials, there's three different materials in this game. So if you want to, you can mix it. Uh, the idea that you don't have to go in each subsequent, you know, uh, <clears throat> successive level. You don't have to necessarily put a two above a, a one and a three above a two. You do have to put something that's above it, but you can skip a whole level. Again, that adds to the freeness of the game. Now, it does incentivize for you to try to get each of those levels in between. It does give you incentive to try to keep the uh, buildings monolithic, just one type of material, because you do get rewards. You get bonus points for accomplishing these feats. So that, again, is cool. It's neat as far as gameplay and strategy is concerned, but at the same time, it frees you, uh, loosens those restrictions just in case things don't work out the way you might <clears throat> prefer for them to do. So again, it, it, this game is not innovative by any sense. It takes this idea of Alhambra, but it adds so many nuanced wrinkles to it that changes the game, in my opinion, it makes it an improvement upon the original game. So because of that, I will give it a B for novelty factor. And finally, my overall grade, I'm gonna give this a B. This game, if it looked better, Right? If the components were better, if the colors were better, if the graphic design was better, I probably would give this an A. That's how much I like it. And that's it, folks. That's my review for Palazzo. Comment down below. Tell me what you think about this game. Perhaps you've tried it before. Maybe you've never heard of it before. I'm curious in reading what you guys have to say. This is Harry from When Harry Met Board Games saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.